incompressible flow over finite wings. Welcome to this tutorial on incompressible flow over finite wings. In this tutorial, we will be discussing the characteristics of incompressible flow over finite wings that include downwash velocity and induced drag, vortex filament theory, Voigt-Savart laws and Helmholtz's theorem, and Prandtl's classical lifting line theory. An incompressible flow over finite wings, the fluid flows smoothly over the surface of the wing, creating a layer of low-pressure air on the top surface of the wing, and a layer of high-pressure air on the bottom surface. This creates lift, which is the force that opposes the weight of the wing. Now, in this video we are going to see about downwash velocity and induced drag. Before we dive into the tutorial, we want to remind you to please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Subscribing is a great way to stay up to date with our latest videos and never miss out on the content you enjoy. So please hit that subscribe button now and let's get started with the tutorial. First let's have a question. How do the aerodynamic characteristics of a whole wing differ from those of its individual airfoil sections? Indeed, an airfoil is simply a section of a wing, and at first thought, you might expect the wing to behave exactly the same as the airfoil, but it is different because of the some reasons. Airfoil, infinite wing. Airfoil is section of a wing and two-dimensional. The flow over an airfoil is two-dimensional has no root and tip, it is infinite. No flow in spanwise but has cordwise. Let us see about the finite wings. A finite wing is a three-dimensional body. Has root and tip and has tip vortex. Has a flow in spanwise and cordwise. Spanwise lift distribution. Wing Tip Vortex The tip vortex is a spiral-shaped flow of air that is created by the wing's lift-inducing pressure difference. As the wing generates lift, the air moving over the upper surface of the wing travels faster than the air moving under the wing. This difference in air speed causes the air to rotate around the wingtip, forming a vortex. The wingtip vortices downstream of the wing induce a small downward component of air velocity in the neighborhood, local airfoil section, of the wing itself. This downward component is called downwash, denoted by the symbol W. An airplane's wing generates lift that creates a swirling pattern of air behind or downwash causes a rearward force on the wing, known as induced drag. Examine the figure closely. The angle between the chord line and the direction of free stream velocity v infinity is the angle of attack alpha. Now more precisely define alpha as the geometric angle of attack. 
The local relative wind is inclined below the direction of free stream velocity by the angle alpha i, called the induced angle of attack. The angle of attack actually seen by the local airfall section is the angle between the chord line and the local relative wind. This angle is given by alpha effective and is defined as the effective angle of attack. The effective angle of attack equals geometric angle of attack alpha induced angle of attack alpha i. The total drag on a subsonic finite wing in real life is the sum of the induced drag d, the skin friction drag df, and the pressure drag dp due to flow separation. Total drag is a summation of induced drag d skin friction drag df and pressure drag dp. The total drag coefficient equals profile drag coefficient plus the induced drag coefficient. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a better understand about the concepts in compressible flow over finite wings downwash and induced drag. If you have any questions or feedback about the video, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'll be happy to hear from you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Yep.